Hello and welcome back to another Arch Linux video. In today's episode we are going to be taking a look at the desktop environments available on Arch Linux and I will be installing all of them and then compare them to each other. So first I wanted to make a video in which I install all of the desktop environments and compare them in just one video but this is something that I will not be able to do just because the sheer amount of the officially supported desktop environments available from the Arch Linux repositories. So we are only going through the officially supported ones which are uh, in the official repositories. We are not even going to the AUR here, but this will take a long time. So instead what I'm going to do is I will install one by one these uh, desktop environments going in alphabetical order. I will show you how they look like kind of out of the box just after you install them without any customization. And I will put in some effort to customize them and try to customize them in the same way. So in the end, we will kind of see which desktop environment, uh, what kind of functions they have as like a fully ready system and how much effort you might have to put in to reach to that uh, state. But here in the first video, I will just going to show you the budget desktop environment and how you can customize the budget desktop environment. What can you get out of it? And uh, as we move through this series, we will get more and more insight on these different uh, DEs and in the end we will be able to do a full comparison if we want to do that. So budget desktop is actually the first uh, desktop environment I've ever installed on Arch Linux. So I really liked the look of it from, uh, from the uh, YouTube videos I was watching. So I got really interested in this. And this uh, desktop environment is comes, this comes very bare bones. If you just install the budget desktop package, that will give you not much. So it is suggested to at least install the GNOME group. So you get all the GNOME applications with the budget desktop, but at least you should have the GNOME control center to, um, to do, to be able to set up your system settings. But we will take a look how this uh, bare bones installation looks like in our virtual machine. So in this series, I am using a virtual machine where I already installed X. So there is no Xorg or Valent installation tutorial here. I already have DWM set up. I already have a login manager set up, which is LightDM in this case with the LightDM GTK greeter. So let's just uh, use our Pacman to install the budgie desktop and the GNOME control center. And once I type in my super secret password, and you will be able to see that this will require us to install quite a few dependencies because, well, DWM does not really come with that many, uh, many uh, dependencies already. So we will need a lot more just for our desktop environment, which is going to be installed here. And I will always uh, use this bare uh, the WM system to install the new desktop environments. So uh, technically you are able to install like Cinnamon and Budget together, but that would not really be conducive to comparing those desktop environments if I already have another one installed and maybe one of them is providing a file manager, but the other one does not. So this kind of confusion should be avoided. So I will always come back to this bare bones DWM installation before uh, actually uh, installing the desktop environment of the week we are trying out. So now that it's installed, I will have to reboot into the uh, budget desktop. All right, so now in my login manager, I can select the budget desktop and you can see that now the login manager thinks that we also have GNOME, which we actually don't have. But once we log in here, the budget desktop will be loaded up and we can see there is this bar in the bottom, which is kind of the uh, signature of the budget desktop and this Raven menu on this right hand side, which we can activate pressing this button. This is also one of the uh, signature things of the budget desktop, which really made me choose this one because kind of having the notifications here, that was nice. Having the calendar here, it's also kind of nice. It's kind of weird that your uh, logout and the things like that appear here on the right hand side. And what we can do is uh, just use this menu here. This is kind of the start menu. Looks like, I don't know, Windows 7 
you can realize that there is nothing in here which we could uh, use. There, this is all the things that we have installed. There is, I installed Qt Browser for browsing, but you, there is no file manager here, and the simple terminal which I used in DWM does not even show up here as a terminal, so there is not much we can do here. So let me just uh, log out and log back into DWM, and let's install a few more things to make the budget desktop actually a usable desktop environment for us. All right, so now back in DWM, we could actually install the things we want to use. Maybe I like the Nemo file manager, for example, and I also like, I don't know what terminal, maybe the GNOME terminal will be fine enough for us. And we should also look for some GTK themes and icon sets. And because the budget desktop uses the GTK, uh, engine, I guess. So we should take a look at the GTK themes here. And if we go down there, there are a lot of them in either the AUR or in the official repositories. And because uh, I personally like the uh, adapter theme, but we might want to take, take a look at this uh, Arc GTK uh, theme. That also sounds like a good one. Or Breeze, that's kind of the KDE fanboys might like this. So why don't we take a look at these? And if we go to the icons uh, page on uh, the, uh, what is this? The Arch Wiki, there will be an icon themes section, which uh, you can just uh, use the search functionality for the Arch uh, repository uh, search here. And we can, I like the Advaita icon theme, but we can also check the Arc icon theme. And there are also other icon themes which are Papyrus. I think that's also kind of popular. Some of them are more related to desktop environments themselves. So you could theoretically theme your desktop, your budgie with the Mate icon theme and uh, get away with that. So let's uh, go back to our virtual machine and uh, we will install some of this. So Pacman-S and I guess we will go with uh, the Advaita icon theme. Advaita icon theme and then Arc icon theme. And also on the theme side, we will take the adapter. This GT, GTK theme and also the Arc G. TK theme, and I also said that we will try the, uh, what was the, we, I said we will try the Breeze, yeah, Breeze-GTK, and let's uh, install all of these, oh, we already have the Advaita icon theme, that's interesting, anyways, let's uh, install all of these, and then we will reboot into the budget desktop to take a look how it looks with all of these modifications. All right, so we are back at the budget desktop and I did some theming and for some reason, the, oh, not this one, I want to show you the budget desktop settings. So if I go here, the, the breeze theme does not appear here, but we have all these arc and the, the adapter variants here. And uh, well, if I open up Let's see, let's open up a Nemo and let's open up a terminal window, for example. You can see that this works, even though the dark theme here is turned on. If I turn it off, like this whole thing becomes bright, but this dark theme does not affect the other windows. So theming the budget desktop is a little weird. And also we have this built-in theme for the panel and the Raven menu and or the Raven panel here. And so if I turn off this built-in theme and maybe turn off the dark theme too, then you can see that now the Raven also follows our um, theming settings. So if I set it to adapter, for example, the Raven menu will take up the adapter uh, design, but I prefer to use it with the built-in theme. And for some reason, the GNOME terminal looks totally transparent with the adapter theme. So let's go back to the arc. Uh, one over here. And uh, so the arc theme has uh, a dark 
variant, so you can just switch to that and uh, you don't even have to turn the dark theme on anymore because it will work. And there is also, for some reason, in the uh, settings panel from the GNOME system settings, which you can use to, you know, set up your keyboard and uh, network. And even it has an appearance menu, which I don't know what this light theme switching is doing because it does not affect any other windows. But anyways, so this is basically the theming capabilities of the budget desktop. Unfortunately, the arc icon theme seemed to miss some of the icons that you have to have for the budget desktop, so you might want to find some icon theme that specifically supports the budget desktop, and you can find that on the internet, and you might just install that in your home directory and uh, use it instead of uh, installing a system-wide icon theme, because I did not find any that is good. So the Raven has a few uh, settings here, which side of the screen you want, uh, it to show up, for example, and uh, I don't know, you can display the week numbers over there. Uh, like, I don't know what else. Yeah, these are the week numbers here between before the weeks themselves. So this is kind of uh, the Raven. There are not many uh, settings for Windows. You can uh, read up on this what you want, like tiling, some basic tile, very basic tiling features basically. Do you want to center new windows on screen or not? Do you want the buttons on or this window decoration on the right or on the left hand side? I think no one wants them on the left hand side, right? And uh, what else? The panel. So panel is this very uh, elegant, simple type of panel which we have and uh, we can add new applets here. We can change, by clicking on these applets, we can change their behavior. So, for example, the menu can show the, men the text menu, or you can l write anything here, which whatever you want, and they will appear down on the uh, bottom here. But I don't like to have this menu and a menu label. That's kind of, why do you need that? No, you don't. Maybe you can write apps here to make it... Uh, very obvious. It can be switched to compact mode, which will uh, show you only the, uh, like the, what is this, the all icons, if they won't get this category icon or categories over there if you turn on the compact mode, but if you still want to see the categories, you can turn on the headers, or if you like to have the categories there, maybe you want to have the rollover feature, so you don't have to click on these, just uh, scroll through them if you want to. The icon task list has a few options, so you can restrict the icons to workspace, you can uh, limit them to only show the favorited, so maybe you want to favorite them, you can do by right-clicking, so you right-mouse click on the icon and then click on this star over there, and then if you say only show favorited, then only my uh, terminal and uh, what is this file manager will be shown there and even if I close the window the icon will stay there. We can also set this show all windows and I click say so if I open two terminals so I guess I can open with right click and the, click this that plus button over there and if I put both of them down or minimize them rather and now this show all windows on the click is turned on, so this is what will happen. This is one of the features that you can turn on on this icon task list. But if you don't like the icon task list, you can actually add a regular, like, old Windows style task list, which it's not really configurable. It's uh, just a regular task list, so maybe you want this to move up there, and you can have this icon task list on they're only with the favorited ones, favorited icons, but everything else you can make the, the budget desktop to show up as like the regular task list if you prefer that kind of thing. One of the good things about the budget desktops panel is that when you create a new one, so now it's on the top, maybe I wanted to put it on the left, I can actually just make it a dock which will make it as small as possible. And if I add a few applets, maybe that's the way where you want to keep your icon task list. 
and uh, now maybe that you want to use this to to switch through the uh, the the applications that you are running. Maybe you want to add something else, maybe a night light or lock key indicator, like do you have caps lock or num, num lock on? You can also add the Raven trigger here, and this will also trigger the Raven from the right hand side for some reason. I guess if you put it on the top, well, what do you, what does it do? No, it always opens it from the right hand side, even though. It's set to automatic. I'm not sure why that is, but anyways, you can add all these applets that are available. So task list, user indicator, status indicator, you can add spacers. A show desktop button might be useful. Maybe it's not really good on the, what is this, on the dock here that would probably look better on your panel somewhere where you can do whatever you want. You can remove this if you don't want. You can remove the whole panel if you don't want it to be there anymore. So basically that's what one thing I really liked about the budget desktop is that I can use the same things on the panel and the dock because it's basically the same. You can add auto starting applications here too. But that's uh, not that much of a budget specific thing. So what else? Uh, yeah, if you cannot really right click on anything here, you can move around these, uh, these panel or what is, what are, what should I call these, these app indicators here? And you can move them around. You can lock that one though. So if you go to the budget desktop settings and on the bottom panels, icon task list, you lock the icons. You cannot move them around anymore. There is no such feature for the regular task list that has no settings available. So I would suggest to, to use the budget desktop to the people who don't really want to customize every aspect of their desktop environment. Maybe if you are confused about too many settings, then the budget desktop is definitely going to be a more simple solution for you. There is not much you can change, but it looks kind of elegant. It has a nice Raven sidebar here, which I think is quite nice to check the date and uh, maybe uh, use the apps that you can just change their audio volume right from the Raven menu. That is also very nice. I really like that. My only problem was that uh, Budget Desktop is not really that well supported on Arch Linux, or at least when I was using it, it wasn't. And uh, as far as I know, it is going through some major design changes Basically, it was, it is using GTK, but they are planning to use a different toolkit. So that might change some things about how the budget desktop environment works. But this was, uh, I guess, uh, the end of today's uh, episode on the desktop environments. And uh, thank you for joining me for taking a look at the budget desktop and tell me what you think about the budget desktop environment down in the comment section below. And I think in the next episode, we will be taking a look at Cinnamon. And well, if you want to see those videos when they come up, why don't you subscribe to the channel? Why don't you like this video if you enjoy this? So let me know that you like this type of review content instead of just uh, more in-depth tutorials. Sometimes doing things like this can also be interesting to both you and me. So, I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.